Good afternoon. Good evening. Am I on, Ian? Wait, no, nope, I'm not. I am now. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, no, I'm really on. Hello. Welcome to the National Opera Center. My name is Laura Lee Everett. I am the Artistic Services Director for Opera America, and I'm thrilled to have all of you here during this inaugural weekend of the hall and all of our fabulous opening events. The facility was conceived and built to become a meeting place, a home, for all of you. To work, perform, and meet, exchange ideas, build partnerships, and build the collaborations that are central to our industry and art form. We're so thrilled to have you here. John Denham and Paul Wolf of Denham Wolf Real Estate acted as brokers for our original space and served as project manager, managers for the entire construction of this facility. They've graciously sponsored this evening's open house, so thank you, Denham Wolf. We're gonna start with a uh, short video that explains the making of the Opera Center. Opera America was established in 1970 in order to assist companies in the exchange, sale, and rental of productions. They moved to New York in 2005 when we realized that was the place to be to facilitate our national membership. Part of the long-range goal was to build a facility because our members needed a place that was acoustically sound and opera-friendly to hold auditions, meetings, collaborations. So that was the genesis of finding a space in New York City that would work. Midtown was an essential location, being close to the trains and easy access to the performance centers of the city. And after searching the entire city and outer boroughs, we discovered the best place to be was in our own backyard, right here in the building that we had moved to to rent in 2005. We managed to secure a wonderful lease deal to stay in this particular building, blow out the ceiling between the, second, uh, the seventh and the eighth floor to create this space. And now you're seeing the fruits of the labors of this wonderful committee who advised us to create a home for opera and opera across America in New York. Please enjoy the film. The Opera Center is a physical facility that is specifically designed for opera and for the voice where opera companies can come to do the work they need to do in New York. Auditions, workshops, showcases of new works, meetings with managers and publishers in one space. My reaction is thank God. I think everyone's been very excited from the beginning just for what this facility really means for the industry and for everyone's companies. To be able to say, go to the Opera Center. There you'll find somebody who can give you answers. That's incredible. That, that's, I'm, I'm, over, I'm just overjoyed. It will be just an incredible opportunity to bring the people of opera together. Space is sorely needed in this industry, in this city, in terms of performance space, audition space, rehearsal space. We have challenges with all of those. For years and years, we have been doing auditions in church basements. Poor singers were having to vocalize in stairwells and bathrooms. The room they put us in, there was a hole to the hallway to the outside, and there was a studio next door that had some sort of jazzercise class going on. You know, but you're so happy to be singing. You're so happy to be given the chance to audition. You're so happy to say, I'm starting. And that's the wonderful thing about our, our young people. They're out there ready to go. And what you throw them, they grab and run with it. Now, the fact that we're throwing them something wonderful just makes you know that they should do their best. They can do their best. They can be in a situation where they can feel their best. Actually having this purpose-built audition space is going to be a real treasure. Deciding on the location for the Opera Center was a kind of accident. We had been looking all over New York, and I came back to the office one day really frustrated, I was kicking my wastebasket around the office saying, heck, why don't we just take two floors in this building and blow the ceiling out? <laughs> The shape of the recital hall is a response to the volume that we created by removing the slab. So there are acoustical issues. So the entire enclosure of the room, floor, walls, and ceiling, 
is floated to create acoustical isolation. And then I feel that there are kind of emotional comfort issues about being nestled within a volume. I think it's beautiful. I think the color and also the shape of the room is going to make it feel very inviting for the auditioners and the auditionees as well. Also having the technical possibilities of being able to transmit that audition to a stage director who might be in Vienna or Paris or London. I'm delighted that we are actually filming this interview right downstairs in the Opera Center main lobby. And this will be the space where visitors enter, getting off the elevators here at 337th Avenue. We have a postcard view of the Empire State Building, so that if anyone gets confused about what city they're in, they see it right there. And this will be a very light place, so you kind of sense the day moving. And this is in contrast to so many of the performance spaces, which are deliberately without windows for the sake of acoustical isolation. This is an audition room. You can see how the walls are built up out of many layers that keeps sound from moving through. And then the floor system is a floating raft system, keep vibrations that might be within the structure, even coming up from the subway, from extending up into the room. They have put in really huge conduits so that the airflow is slower and there's less noise generated by the flow of air. You can air condition an airport with these. We have a number of different libraries here at the Opera Center. A complete score and listening library. We'll also have a research and reference library. So that you can study languages, so that you can study the history of the opera, because you need to know what's going on around you, politically, socially, in order to find out who and what your character is about. We tend to lead a slightly nomadic existence in the world of opera. The idea of having a space that's meant for us is going to be people from all over the country feeling like they have a home in the city. It's going to feel like there's this kind of sheltering, protected quality. And I think that is a quality that we all need in our work. And what my hopes for this place is that it just buzzes with everything that's possible in the development of opera. It will give us the opportunity to have interaction with other companies that will strengthen the entire field. I want to be a part of this thing that says, let's do this together, let's do it the best we can for the profession. And this house will do it. Thank you to our fabulous and favorite videographer, Greg Emitaz, for putting that wonderful tribute together and letting us understand what was really involved in putting the Opera Center together. One of the other things that we decided to do as part of inaugurating this beautiful hall was to commission new work, which has been a long-standing initiative of Opera America. And the best way to do that, we thought, was, well, we need to put the word out there and find out who the composers are that arc our industry and if they're willing to write a song. Just a song that we could actually christen the hall with. As it turns out, we had 70 composers that we offered the uh, opportunity to and 47 of them were both thrilled to join the commission as well as meet the um, particularly tight deadline. We had to get this ready, done, and recorded. One of the things that we agreed to do was we want to perform all of the songs that were commissioned for the opening of the um, opera, uh, the National Opera Center in this hall in the course of the next year. So you're about to hear the premiere of three of the songs that were commissioned for the songbook. Um, they're also in the program out front. We had three songs premiered this morning as part of the ribbon cutting, and uh, three that were part of the press conference on Monday. All of them, because we were lucky enough to record this, not in this hall, because it wasn't quite done, um, but to record this, and it is available on iTunes and CD Baby and on our website, and in the lobby, it is a three-disc set. 
Uh, and you can purchase it here if you would like, or you can buy the digital version, or both. I encourage both. We, the printed songbook, which was printed by Shop Publishing, who we are most grateful for collaborating with us on this particular project, is also available for sale in the lobby and on their website through Hal Leonard. For this performance this evening, we have a home at last for Opera America, composed by Robert Ward, who turned 95 last week. Um, uh, the text is by Susan Chapik. Jeffrey Gwaltney is our tenor, who will be singing this today, and George Nesich will play the piano. Followed by that is La Tour, a song for us by Howard Shore. Elizabeth Codnoir is the text composer, and Jennifer Elmer will sing for us, and Tim Long will play the piano. Down to the Twigs and Seeds was written for us by Jack Perla, with text by James Fenton. Sarah Jakubiak is a soprano who will sing for us, and David Holkabor on the piano. Please welcome these lovely artists and enjoy the Opera America Songbook. Our native tea was found 
home means many things to many people. <laughs> but we're really glad that and hope that this will be home for all of you. Thank you. There will be more songbook songs at 5.30 and at 6. Please take a moment to enjoy a glass of wine or water or wander the building and look at all the other beautiful spaces. And welcome th again to the National Opera Center.
I've seen you around a yeah. whole bunch, and I kept going. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the National Opera Center. I'm Laura Lee Everett, the Artistic Services Director. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for our industry open house. This was the house that was built for you. As the National Service Organization, we don't produce, we produce what you produce. And wanted to give you a space dedicated in New York to be able to share with everyone in the country who we're sharing with through live stream this evening. So welcome to everyone out there in the rest of Opera Land. We're going to start with a couple of performances from the Opera America Songbook. When we were looking at opening the National Opera Center, a huge mission of Opera America all along has been to encourage and produce the creation of new work. And what better way to do that for the opening of the National Opera Center than to commission a series of songs from some of the greatest and most established composers as well as some of the newest and emerging composers in the industry. Uh, for this evening, we, after commissioning, we invited 70 composers that we had given money to over the years for new work, and 47 of them responded. So we have a wonderful three CD set that we have recorded of the Net Opera America Songbook. It is available for sale in our lobby. Uh, if you would like to get the full box set, you can also get it on iTunes and through our website at this point as uh, MP3s. I encourage both. Um, for this evening, we are premiering two of the pieces from the songbook. Part of our initiative is to perform all of the songs on the songbook through the course of the first year here at the Opera Center. For this next set, we will have Our House, which is by Stuart Wallace, who wrote the music and the text for that. And Leah Edwards is the soprano. David Hokabor is playing the piano. And Our Haven by composer Jean Murray, who is here with us this evening. Thank you for your song. And Dana Purcell Morris set the text. Leah Edwards will also sing that song. And David Hokabor will play the piece for us. Enjoy the songbook.
to David and Leah for that lovely performance of both of those songs and to Jean for being here. For those of you who've already seen the film, this would be an optimal time if you want to go wander around and see the rest of the Opera Center. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the film about the making of the Opera Center, please stay. We're going to bring the screen in and uh, let you watch how this magical place came to be. Opera America was established in 1970 in Washington, D.C., and in 2005, we knew we needed to move to New York to be able to facilitate more of the opera industry because so many of the members came through this city to do what they needed to do to audition to be able to hear singers and communicate with the other companies that they collaborated with in the business. It was just about finding the right place to be home and about building it. Please enjoy this wonderful film. Greg Emita is the videographer who put it together for us about how this entire building came about and why we are where we are here in Midtown so that you all get to enjoy the facility. The Opera Center is a physical facility that is specifically designed for opera and for the voice, where opera companies can come to do the work they need to do in New York. Auditions, workshops, showcases of new works, meetings with managers and publishers in one space. My reaction is, thank God. I think everyone's been very excited from the beginning, just for what this facility really means for the industry and for everyone's companies. To be able to say, Go to the Opera Center. There you'll find somebody who can give you answers. That's incredible. That, that's, I'm, I'm, over, I'm just overjoyed. It will be just an incredible opportunity to bring the people of opera together. Space is sorely needed in this industry, in this city in terms of performance space, audition space, rehearsal space. We have challenges with all of those. For years and years, we had been doing auditions in church basements. Poor singers were having to vocalize in stairwells and bathrooms. The room they put us in, there was a hole to the hallway to the outside, and there was a studio next door that had some sort of jazzercise class going on. You know, but you're so happy to be singing. You're so happy to be given the chance to audition. You're so happy to say, I'm starting. And that's the wonderful thing about our, our young people. They're out there ready to go. And what you throw them, they grab and run with it. Now, the fact that we're throwing them something wonderful just makes you know that they should do their best. They can do their best. They can be in a situation where they can feel their best. Actually having this purpose-built audition space is gonna be a real treasure. Deciding on the location for the Opera Center was a kind of accident. We had been looking all over New York, and I came back to the office one day really frustrated. I was kicking my wastebasket around the office saying, heck, why don't we just take two floors in this building and blow the ceiling out? <laughs> The shape of the recital hall is a response to the volume that we created by removing the slab. So there are acoustical issues. So the entire enclosure of the room, floor, walls, and ceiling, is floated to create acoustical isolation. And then I feel that there are kind of emotional comfort issues about being nestled within a volume. I think it's beautiful. I think the color and also the shape of the room is going to make it feel very inviting for the auditioners and the auditionees as well. Also having the technical possibilities of being able to transmit that audition to a stage director who might be in Vienna or Paris or London. I'm delighted that we're actually filming this interview right downstairs in the Opera Center main lobby. And this will be the space where visitors enter, getting off the elevators here at 337th Avenue. We have a postcard view of the Empire State Building, so that if anyone gets confused about what city they're in, they see it right there. This will be a very light place where you kind of sense the day moving. And this is in contrast to so many of the performance spaces, which are deliberately without windows for the sake of acoustical isolation. This is an audition room. You can see how the walls are built up out of many 
layers. That keeps sound from moving through. And then the floor system is a floating raft system, keep vibrations that might be within the structure or even coming up from the subway from extending up into the room. They have put in really huge conduits so that the airflow is slower and there's less noise generated by the flow of air. You can air condition an airport with these. We have a number of different libraries here at the Opera Center. A complete score and listening library. We'll also have a research and reference library. So that you can study languages, so that you can study the history of the opera, because you need to know what's going on around you politically, socially, in order to find out who and what your character is about. We tend to lead a slightly nomadic existence in the world of opera. The idea of having a space that's meant for us is going to be people from all over the country feeling like they have a home in the city. It's going to feel like there's this kind of sheltering, protected quality. And I think that is a quality that we all need in our work. And what my hopes for this place is that it just buzzes with everything that's possible in the development of opera. It will give us the opportunity to have interaction with other companies that will strengthen the entire field. I want to be a part of this thing that says, let's do this together. Let's do it the best we can for the profession. And this house will do it. Those were samples of some other songbook songs you heard in the video. Please enjoy seeing the rest of the Opera Center. We will have another performance of songbook songs in about five minutes, followed by the video, so you can come back and hear some more music. And uh, if you missed the beginning of the film, you can see that again, too. Thank you all for being here. Enjoy the Opera Center.
this way before we start the video camera, and this way. Don't be afraid of the front row. This is not Presbyterian Church. We're going to go. Maybe this way. Please come down. Come down and join us. That way people who are coming in late can slip into those seats in the back. And they don't have to walk in front of the cameras. There you go. so much closer. Okay. I can make notes of you. Yeah. Awesome. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the National Opera Center. Uh, how many of you saw the movie already? Okay, we're going to show it again first just because. So, sorry, if you want to go have another glass of wine and come back in. Um, the National Opera Center, in its uh, initial idea uh, came out of Opera America, which is the National Service Organization for Opera, founded in 1970 in Washington, D.C. After 30 years, we moved here to New York in 2005. Ian, that's the cue for the screen. Um, <laughs> we moved here in 2005, knowing that being in New York was going to facilitate our membership in the best of all possible ways, since so many of the members from across the country and the world come here to hold auditions, to have production meetings, to collaborate. The trick was finding a home and understanding that what we needed to do was be able to have not just office space, but a real facility that had audition space and meeting space and workspace. Somewhat of a challenge in the concrete jungle of downtown Manhattan, but here we are in the building where we moved to be renters, uh, going along with that Dorothy theme from Oz that it was right here in our own backyard. Uh, the wonderful videographer Greg Emitaz has made a great tribute video following the arc of how the Opera Center came to be, so please enjoy the film. The Opera Center is a physical facility that is specifically designed for opera and for the voice, where opera companies can come to do the work they need to do in New York. Auditions, workshops, showcases of new works, meetings with managers and publishers in one space. My reaction is, thank God. I think everyone's been very excited from the beginning, just for what this facility really means for the industry and for everyone's companies. To be able to say, Go to the Opera Center. There you'll find somebody who can give you answers. That's incredible. That, that's, I'm, I'm, over, I'm just overjoyed. It will be just an incredible opportunity to bring the people of opera together. The 
Space is sorely needed in this industry, in this city, in terms of performance space, audition space, rehearsal space. We have challenges with all of those. For years and years, we had been doing auditions in church basements. Poor singers were having to vocalize in stairwells and bathrooms. The room they put us in, there was a hole to the hallway to the outside, and there was a studio next door that had some sort of jazzercise class going on. You know, but you're so happy to be singing. You're so happy to be given the chance to audition. You're so happy to say, I'm starting. And that's the wonderful thing about our, our young people. They're out there ready to go. And what you throw them, they grab and run with it. Now, the fact that we're throwing them something wonderful just makes you know that they should do their best. They can do their best. They can be in a situation where they can feel their best. Actually having this purpose-built audition space is gonna be a real treasure. Deciding on the location for the Opera Center was a kind of accident. We had been looking all over New York, and I came back to the office one day really frustrated. I was kicking my wastebasket around the office saying, heck, why don't we just take two floors in this building and blow the ceiling out? The shape of the recital hall is a response to the volume that we created by removing the slab. So there are acoustical issues. So the entire enclosure of the room, floor, walls, and ceiling, is floated to create acoustical isolation. And then I feel that there are kind of emotional comfort issues about being nestled within a volume. I think it's beautiful. I think the color and also the shape of the room is going to make it feel very inviting for the auditioners and the auditionees as well. Also having the technical possibilities of being able to transmit that audition to a stage director who might be in Vienna or Paris or London. I'm delighted that we're actually filming this interview right downstairs in the Opera Center main lobby. And this will be the space where visitors enter, getting off the elevators here at 337th Avenue. We have a postcard view of the Empire State Building, so that if anyone gets confused about what city they're in, they see it right there. And this will be a very light place where you kind of sense the day moving. And this is in contrast to so many of the performance spaces, which are deliberately without windows for the sake of acoustical isolation. This is an audition room. You can see how the walls are built up out of many layers that keeps sound from moving through. And then the floor system is a floating raft system, keep vibrations that might be within the structure or even coming up from the subway from extending up into the room. They have put in really huge conduits so that the airflow is slower and there's less noise generated by the flow of air. You can air condition an airport with these. We have a number of different libraries here at the Opera Center. A complete score and listening library. We'll also have a research and reference library. So that you can study languages, so that you can study the history of the opera, because you need to know what's going on around you politically, socially, in order to find out who and what your character is about. We tend to lead a slightly nomadic existence in the world of opera. The idea of having a space that's meant for us is going to be people from all over the country feeling like they have a home in the city. It's going to feel like there's this kind of sheltering, protected quality, and I think that is a quality that we all need in our work. And what my hopes for this place is that it just buzzes with everything that's possible in the development of opera. It will give us the opportunity to have interaction with other companies that will strengthen the entire field. I want to be a part of this thing that says, let's do this together. Let's do it the best we can for the profession. And this house will do it. Thank you. 
One of the other things that we decided to do in the opening of a brand new home here in New York was to give it some brand new songs. Uh, commissioning of new work has long been a mission of Opera America. And in doing that for this particular establishment, we thought, well, how do you pick one composer? You obviously can't. So we sent out an offer to 70 composers who were all people that had either received funding or had been funded by our member companies to write songs in the last 25 years. I'm happy to say that 47 of them responded to the commission charge to write a song about a new home or their love of song or opera. Um, I'm also overwhelmed to say that we then had about three months to get those songs into a printed songbook and get them recorded and put on a CD which is available for sale in the lobby and is also available on iTunes. It's a three disc set and it represents composers from young and emerging 20 year olds to a wonderful song by Robert Ward who turned 95 last week. Um, I'm very, very pleased to let you know that we're going to hear three more songs from the songbook as part of all of them being premiered in this hall over the course of the next year. And we have several of the composers with us this evening as well. The first song we will hear is Amina in White Flowing Robes by Bob Telson. And Bob is here with us from Argentina. We're very happy he was able to be here this weekend. The text is by Richard Schindel. John Margolis is the baritone, and Bob himself will be playing the piano. The next song is Second Breath by composer Huang Ro, who wrote both the text and the, word, the music. And I have to tell you a little secret. When uh, my colleague Lindsay was getting ready to do the songbook printing, she called Huang Ro to ask if he wanted to put a translation of the song into the songbook. And he said, oh no, it's a made up language. A new song and a new house needs a new language. <laughs> so don't trouble your minds about it, just enjoy that one. Um, Fang Tao Zhang, is that how we say Zhang? Her name is the soprano and it's, she's lovely. And Huang Ro will be playing that piece as well. And the third song, Sound Breaking Away, by composer Anthony Davis, uh, text by Quincy Trope, Darren K. Stoke, space baritone, will be here to sing that, and David Holkabor is playing it. Uh, Anthony is not here with us this evening, but I'm hoping he's able to watch this on the live stream, which you all will also be able to watch and send to all of your friends from our YouTube channel later tonight. I encourage that. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy these premiere performances of the Opera America Songbook. Oh, 
touching breeze. Their gentle hands are silent, save voices of birds winging in me. Did I deny it all in continuous silence? 
part of our opening weekend here at the Opera Center. Please take some more of the tour, have a glass of wine, enjoy the rest of your evening, and enjoy the new National Opera Center. <laughs>